We are all team members of the CIHR Social Research Center in HIV Prevention. As researchers, we want to offer context to our group of colleagues within the SRC and more broadly to other HIV researchers and community advocates with an interest in decolonizing Indigenous and African diaspora research methodologies. We also wanted to learn from each other and collectively advocate for diverse research methodologies in HIV and AIDS research in Canada. Initial scoping of the literature yielded 21,467 references. We chose to restrict literature to 1999 onwards after our search. Our team employed a standardized screening tool to review abstracts for inclusion in our review. This resulted in 3,175 abstracts being included. To review our yield of included literature, we purposely pulled 350 full articles as a sample of the includes. We reviewed these for inclusion, which resulted in 82 relevant articles. A planned meeting to review our progress evolved into a full day discussion about our review process and our reflections of the literature. What are we doing? Why are we involved in this project? What does this project mean to us as individuals and as researchers? How do we feel about being involved on this project? We felt this was an important discussion to record, capture visually and orally what words may not. So thinking about, you know, how are we changing the scoping review process? I mean, I think we abandoned the scoping review process. <laughs> yeah. We're certainly not following a pure <laughs> scoping review process. Process is a huge part. It's not so much like what's the result. It's more about the process of, of getting there. And so, although the result may have nothing to do with our, you know, our, our, you know, categories that we were scoping for, or, you know, or looking um, for, the process that they that they, you know, used to get there was I found very very useful mm -hmm. for what we are looking at. So process being very very important. Um, and then this this. Um, this sort of like uh, you sort of like made the the comparison to Western the mastery, which is sort of like again to master an area or a discipline or a field or a body of literature. Um, whereas I feel like what we're looking at is, is so much more. It's so much larger. It's so much more yes. profound. It spans you know time, geographies. So I feel like again like the literature that we're looking at really lends it to itself to this idea of process over discipline or finite sort of like measurable area or you know rather than going in i feel like this our literature is way out here like we're it's the other way we're diverging and looking at a much larger scope of of things yeah. so one of the pieces that i think is interesting in, in our process for this is that when i read the the indigenous decolonizing yeah. literatures what we're doing through this, you know, personal journey, which has become a group journey, is we're actually mimicking what the indigenous research says mm -hmm. that knowledge is, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that starts with our individual perspectives, and we share that, and we co-create mm -hmm. something that's new. Mm -hmm. And that's what knowledge is, and that's what <coughs> truth value is. Where we, and, and, you know, not that there aren't differences among, in the way that we're interpreting this, but that we're we're working together to come to a new idea of yeah. what what knowledge is or what knowledge yeah. could be. Part of this project is also an opportunity to kind of produce something that our colleagues <coughs> might be able to respect, might be able to pick up and use, and would give some degree of. Um, of validity in a world where validity is generated through other literature, um, to what we're saying. I think that's one of the biggest tensions I've experienced. This need to validate ourselves mm -hmm. to our, our, um, our colleagues who adhere to Western ways of knowing. Mm -hmm. And I find that a little um, tense. <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, because I think validity might mean something different for, for us and for this way of knowing. When I first came on this project, I naively thought, oh yeah, we could do this, if we could do a scoping review, and, we could, and that would validate what we are learning. Mm -hmm. And then I'm finding, it's not the, the method itself, but why we're doing it that causes me tension. 
it, it occurred to me while I was the first pass and I was trying to encourage everyone and myself to like move through the numbers of literature that we had assigned ourselves that what we were trying to do was take broad ideas these are expansive empowering ideas and we were trying to we are trying to shoehorn them into a method that essentially reduces them mm -hmm. so that you can thematize yeah, thematize, so you can collect them into an accumulated statement based on a number of themes where the real power I felt like in what was probably going to be the most interesting articles we would eventually read would be in their, somehow in their bigness. Yeah. <laughs> Explaining knowledge from other worldviews that aren't Western is a, is a powerful thing and that reducing them into a more westernized method of reduction and then accumulation mm -hmm. were like at cross purposes. I, I actually felt like Nicole when I had to look at um, uh, methodologies that are really very different and don't fit within a western perspective mm -hmm. But we're trying to fit them within a Western mm -hmm. framework of understanding knowledge or um, generating knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was kind of frustrating because, you know, you didn't just want to say that, oh, we looked uh, like for um, ACB populations. You just don't want to come out and say, you know what, well, we really didn't find any literature. Mm -hmm. When you know there's, there's so much work going on in different places, yes. uh, it is just that it doesn't fit within this Western concept of uh, understanding knowledge and the way it is actually generated. Mm -hmm. So is, the, is, is it worthwhile fitting it within this methodology which doesn't fit? Mm -hmm. So I think for me it all comes down to there, there are different ways of assessing truth value and why do we feel this need to impose other systems of truth value on something that's just different? You know, the world has changed a lot in, since I started this journey. Um, what, you know, back in the days when qualitative research was like, oh, right? Mm -hmm. Qualitative research is now pretty much accepted. But, but now we have new forms of knowledge that are percolating up that people are going, well, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't get this. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, I mean, it's a really interesting process to be part of and to yeah. watch. I mean, when we're doing a scoping review, when we're doing any kind of analysis, I think, of, of the social world, including the social world that includes research, right, that we need to begin to, or, or start from a place that understands that information from the worldviews and perspectives of the people who originally created it. Now, this, I mean, this is what this whole project, this is the kind of, thing about yes. handling this literature is like, I'm reading, well now that I've pulled a few paper, a full paper and reviewing, it's like, there are, there is knowledge in this paper that I think is of interest <coughs> to this topic that's not explicitly stated in the words in the paper. Mm -hmm. It's the way that it's, this paper mm -hmm. teaches me something or the way that I interpret what they're talking about in this section or in this paragraph or in this, and that I don't know if a scoping review is supposed to do that, right? But, but that mimics the way that I actually learn from the literature outside of this project mm -hmm. as well. Sometimes it's the direct content in, that's written in the conclusion section, right? But sometimes it's like, I don't know, I, I mean, like it's the relationship that I build with the author and the journal and the content, and, you know, that, that thing that I, I have hard time sort of mm -hmm. explaining in concrete terms, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, as more of the pieces that I thought we might actually be interested in including, we're also speaking about relationships between researchers and relationships between communities and relationships between knowledge in those communities. And I was like, I, we could also learn so much by paying attention to the other things in the research <coughs> that um, have, like, and, and that's the idea of transforming the scoping review process to something that actually captures the knowledge that we're seeing. Right. You just touched on something, and I don't think it was Randy who said it, but it stuck in my head. Audience, the importance yeah, of I audience, because um, I, I swear it was you, Randy, but if not, tell me I misquoted <laughs> you. It's not for us to teach, it's for them to listen. And, mm. and if you are an open listener, 
then yeah, the scope and review methodology will work because you will see there is no insurance, <laughs> you know, you know. But other people might see something different and that's where the danger can be yeah. with using a Western approach. Audience is really important and sometimes we don't acknowledge yeah. how much we're catering to the audience rather than to um, the truth. The truth. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's yeah. actually interesting that, uh, you know, when we were, look, we were getting the articles, you know, you decide what to include and what to exclude and I was um, having a lot of conflict when you, when I, you know, I actually read one article that was a definite exclude. Um, and you know, when you reach the conclusion, you realize, you know, this actually needed to be said to, and to be understood in the context in which we're working. But if I didn't read it, I just have left it and said, you know what, mm -hmm. this is not worth uh, including because it doesn't cover um, the different topics we're actually mm -hmm. looking at. Uh, but the conclusions were very relevant to what we're actually doing, and I thought, gee, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. 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 That is a really, really important point, mm -hmm. right? And that question, again, going back to the notion of audience, right? And like, what, <coughs> how, do we, how, how, how do we not compromise our values and our, ourselves yeah. and, and try and squish ourselves or mold ourselves into a process or a presentation yeah. or an understanding that isn't, isn't meaningful? But at the same time, mindful of our audience, try to present something that can be taken up, right? If we want to influence and share, right? That, that perhaps some of the people that we're talking to, that we're trying to, colleagues who we really respect for their, their great intelligence, for their, their work, for, but who haven't been exposed to, who aren't from our cultures, who aren't, who aren't working with our communities. And so how do we present something in a way that, um, that's, a, that's, that's, that's familiar enough to, for them to pick it up. But then there's that balance about saying, but we want to open the door, we want to open the dialogue, and we want to find some way to create a space that doesn't compromise either side, to your point, Randy, that, that honors everybody's ways of knowing, and the multiple ways of knowing in the world, and how we, how we capture that. And I, and I think that's part of, um, of what's happened with this project, is that there's finally a space for us to articulate something that we, um, that we haven't had a space for before. And, and, and on our terms, so our control and our space, and I think that's really um, part of what's made this such an exciting project. For